the Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. September 28th, 2020, a few minutes after the cash close here on a Monday afternoon with the S&P futures up some 60 handles. So we got it. It's the rip your face off rally. The big question, though, do you really want to go out and run and sell into this rally? That's what we're actually going to answer for you here in the next couple of minutes on this evening's video. So as I was saying, the S&P futures up approximately 1.86%. NASDAQ futures are flying up 2.3%. But this is an area that we're going to dig pretty deeply into here. And again, it's the NASDAQ futures because when you start to compare the NASDAQ futures, and this is literally what I want to start with this evening, when you start looking at the NASDAQ futures, Okay, and that, you know, uh, well, blistering move to the upside of 2.3%, start to look down at what I kind of call the usual suspects, better known as the monsters of tech. These are the monsters of tech right now. Now, the monsters of tech, and I'll actually highlight this symbol for you for just a moment, kind of get a feel for it. For those of you that uh, are not aware, the monsters of tech is actually a conglomerate symbol that, uh, that I built. It's, a, it's Apple plus Amazon plus Facebook plus Google plus Microsoft. And one of the really key things in, in this evening that you should take a look at is, you know, great, you know, the NASDAQ's flying to the upside here. The monsters of tech are lagging. And that's a little bit bothersome because when you look at this idea of like, hey, you know what? I've been talking extensively about what I term bounce and fade trades. And that is when we bounce like this, we're going to come in and we're going to short it and we're going to short it, but with defined risk, looking for us to have that, you know, wicked pullback again, because right now this looks like that kind of quintessential rip your face off rally. But one thing's a little bit alarming in here. And the alarming aspect is that the monsters of tech, they didn't necessarily boom like you would expect them to. I mean, look at some of the sell side activity. In fact, I'll tell you what, I'll actually put this on a uh, year to date percentage basis. You see some wild sell side activity. The bounce over here, all right, you know, it's it's getting exciting. And Microsoft, which is up, what, a whopping 0.8% today. Apple, Apple was relatively in line with the NASDAQ. It finished at uh, the highs of the day. Start to look at Facebook, totally lackluster bounces. Okay, the problem right now with trying to short into what we just saw is that kind of quintessential rip your face off rally is that it still appears just a little bit too early inside of some of these monsters of tech. What I'm saying is right now, there's still very likely some fuel to push us higher before some of that sell side activity may reemerge. And that's that's going to be a little bit bothersome for some of you, because I'll tell you what, anytime you're looking at these bounce and fade trades, one of the decisions that you have to make as a trader, OK, yeah, you see that that big bounce coming. And as a listen, you got to step in at some point over here. Right. And short. The question is when and where. And I'm going to tell you right now that timing, it's never going to be perfect. It's just not going to be perfect. But in a trading session where the NASDAQ is, you know, again, in the entire marketplace is having this rip and move to the upside. But then you see, you know, key players like a Microsoft and, and, a, and a Facebook and even a Google in here. They're just not playing into this. And then you have even Apple. All right. When you start looking at this, even Apple is just par for the course. You know, nothing is really outperforming other than maybe Tesla. But, you know, Tesla's completely manic anyway. Uh, you have to almost exclude that. Again, it leaves something to be desired, and I still think it leaves some upside potential in here. But again, even at fear of missing okay, that next down move. But before I go any further, I think it's also uh, appropriate to discuss the fact that when I'm doing these bounce and fade trades and I'm talking about, you know, hey, let's step in and short somewhere up here. I am not shorting the outright stock. I'm actually using an in-out spread, which is defined risk options trade to actually take, uh, again, a short position in what we are anticipating to be nothing more than a bounce. Listen, sell side activity is not a one way ticket to the uh, to the downside. There's a, a wicked bounce going on right now and you got to actually let that bounce go. So the game plan, well, at least for me at this point, is to allow the bounce to uh, to play out a little bit, even into Tuesday. Uh, I wouldn't go that much further than that. And I'm actually going to going to detail why right now. If you cruise over to the SPX, the mother of all products, okay, the SPX this week has just about an $87 expected move. Fun thing is, 
SPX already moved up 53 bucks today, so we're more than halfway home. So if we continue to follow through just mildly to the upside, I am not. I am not going to wait for the S&Ps to actually clip the upper edge of the expected move. I'm going to step in and I'm going to use an in-out spread. And I'm going to use an in-out spread that's got a little bit of distance, a little bit of time out here. I'm not necessarily going to short just for the next, you know, two to three days. Um, but again, we've already had fairly wicked move to the upside. Question is, can we extend a little bit further? And uh, I believe the answer is yes. That uh, again, in the midst of a bounce like this, I mean, look at sectors like the Russell. This thing is just beaten and bludgeoned. You look at something like the uh, like the financials. Okay, talk about beaten and bludgeoned. This is a year-to-date basis. You know, the financials were just down 26%. It's a big move today. You know, 2.4% to the upside in the uh, in the financials. Okay, this is the day for beaten down sectors to have that good bounce. But again, you know, coming in here and trying to fade the very first day that we bounce to the upside, even again, even at the fear of missing it, all right? I think we have at least another day or two to the upside. Uh, by tomorrow, I'm absolutely going to step in though with some uh, directional bias. And when I say directional bias, again, I am implying that I am going to use in out spreads and again for those of you not familiar with those well you better get familiar with them because they're coming back in a big way right now these bounce and fade trades are, are where it's at some other aspects that really resonate with me in today's marketplace listen one of the hallmarks okay of that you know as i say that kind of quintessential rip your face off rally which is what we had today is correlation coefficients being extraordinarily high and that's exactly what you're seeing in here today now you guys know i look at this uh, extensively so when you look at the s p 100 at the cash open there was you know 101 stocks trading to the upside again there's 101 stocks in the s p 100 go figure right google's listed twice every single stock was up today at the close that's full-blown correlation and what that basically means is individual stocks they don't mean that much right all it is is just order flow piles into the futures contracts and actually pulls the entire basket behind it. And what's bothersome, though, about this is when you when you look at individual stocks, you should see some leadership out of what has been some of the stronger stocks. And you're not. Again, they're still falling flat in a wild up day. And again, that leaves a, a lot to be desired out of this rally. Mm, hence why I think there could be just a little bit more, you know, uh, upside inside of this marketplace given the fact that, uh, again, we didn't have some of the biggest stocks, some of the biggest market caps actually play into it. Now, with that with that thought in mind, when I say big market caps didn't play into it, you don't necessarily have to run out here and, and short a Microsoft. And again, watch the earnings announcement. Of course, if we're going to put a short position on, we're going to do it prior to the earnings announcement. You don't necessarily have to run out there and short like an Apple. But I was looking, again, along the lines of, you know, stuff that maybe you don't look at necessarily every single day, which is like NVIDIA. Maybe some people do. Even NVIDIA, it's still, it's bounced a little bit here, but it hasn't gotten off the mat. Like this thing hasn't made, you know, a wicked move, if you would, to the upside. Even NVIDIA, which is one of the wild childs of the marketplace, okay, this should be a warning shot that I'm firing at you over here. I hope you guys see it as that. This thing's only up, you know, one and a quarter percent with the NASDAQ ripping by 2.3%. And what's the warning over there? Well, the warning is, first of all, it didn't really bounce with the rest of the marketplace, not nearly as much. So there's marketplace is obviously still in some degree of trouble over here, but we do have to let these things kind of follow through. Again, even at the risk of missing the possibility of a good short position, I don't want to put you in a bad position. Like you can't, you know, you can't chase this thing and be like, I got to get in right now. Give it a little time, a little bit of play. Another aspect that also kind of resonates with me. So this correlation being really high screams that this is nothing more than a temporary rally. What else screams that this is a temporary rally going on? Volatility didn't back off. Okay. Listen, when was the last time that you saw, and for those of you that have really been around for a while, when was the last time you saw the S&Ps up almost 2%? Volatility was flat. Now you're like, oh, it was down 0.8%. Come on, that's volatility's flat. Okay. When was the last time that you saw the S&Ps up 2%? The VIX didn't back off. Not an inch, people. Nothing. Okay. Bonds, what do they do? Nothing. Okay. What else you got? You want to look at the dollar? Okay. Oh, look, the dollar. It, it almost retraced one trading session over here. The dollar, as I said on this last weekend's video, this thing looks like the new VIX. So it backed off just mildly. This thing looks like it's going to explode back to the upside. And you even have the VVIX. The VVIX actually finished the session ever so slightly higher. 
Okay, the nine day volatility actually finished slightly higher. These are things that, again, you know, if you're kind of going through and you're assessing like, oh, that was a huge rally. It's safe to get back in the water. Okay, I don't look at any of that like this is a safe rally to get back in the water. Okay, I've told you on this weekend's update. We expected a really wicked bounce. So you've got one. And the S&Ps have, you know, it's impressed us a little bit. But the NASDAQ kind of lack, uh, again, lackluster to the upside. And uh, if you remember this weekend's video, I said it can even get to like back to like 11,600. Again, I don't want to step in premature, but I do want to step in. I want to step in with some defined risk. And uh, there's going to be some wonderful short opportunities, I think, that are approaching us. I'm going to... Uh, Again, I'm going to wait. I'm going to be nice and patient, and I'm going to execute. When I do, I'll text out and I'll fire out trades to all the clientele of Theo Trade. Have a wonderful evening, everybody. Bye-bye.